Let me show you in this video how to get a high quality and professional time lapse for your video project. We use the advantages of raw photos and therefore have a lot of leeway for editing. Time lapses, which are you seeing right now, I created this way. So let's get started. So what we need is a camera with an interval timer and even if your camera doesn't have an interval timer, you can easily upgrade it with a remote control like this one, which is available for little money. The reason why I don't use the internal time-lapse creation of the camera is because of the small editing possibilities afterwards. The camera is shooting in JPEG and the final video is created in the camera. The RAW format allows us to work with a 14-bit image, what is just huge. With a final video out of the cam, we will never have these possibilities. What else needed is a reliable tripod which doesn't start wiggling on the first gust of wind. For a moving time lapse, I'm using a slider, but of course, this is not a must have. So, we look for an appropriate scene which should be time lapsed and mount our camera on the tripod and set it up. My most used settings are 400 or 800 images with an interval of 5 seconds. That means the camera takes every 5 seconds one picture and does this 400 times, for example. So, we have a recording time of a half hour, respectively, one hour at 800 images. In the end we have a playtime of around about 13 to 15 seconds when we play these 400 images at 30 frames per second and a resulting playtime of 26 to 30 seconds at 800 images. An interval of 5 seconds provides a very smooth movement of the sun for example or if you photograph the car traffic it is very detailed. For astro time lapses I have to use a bigger interval because of the long exposure times. If a photo is exposed for 10 seconds, for example, I set the interval to 12 seconds and all this in manual mode. It is no problem to change the settings during the recording, but please don't do that when the camera is exposing. But the real recording time is then at 2 and a half hours at 800 frames. So as you can see, it needs some planning and keep always in mind, a time lapse makes it possible to play back a very long period of time in the shortest possible time. So this method is ideal for sunrise and sunset, for the star sky and the weather just for any large scale change. Before you start you should set the focus and set it then to manual, so the camera doesn't refocus for every photo. And to minimize vibrations and avoid shutter shock, you can use exposure delay and electronic front curtain shutter. In the most situations I'm using aperture priority mode, the light metering of the cameras nowadays is excellent and reliable and to get an impressive transition from daylight to night aperture priority is the most comfortable. I try to keep the ISO settings as low as possible but you have to be foresighted where my previous example should serve again. If my time lapse ends in the dark I should not work with the lowest ISO but know how far the camera exposes in darker lighting conditions without exceeding the interval time. So set the ISO already in the beginning from 200 to 800, that's a good value. The advanced camera models like the Nikon D850 have some nice additional features. For example the silent shutter for environments where every noise can be disturbing. Another cool feature is the exposure smoothing. The exposure of the next shot will be matched to the previous one. And the camera supports an interval priority. This function allows to prioritize the exposure or the interval timer. If the exposure time is longer than the set interval time, you can activate this option and the exposure will be aborted no matter if it's correct exposed or not. The interval timer has higher priority. What also is very important is a full charge battery, especially in cold conditions. And of course enough space on the storage card. Sounds logical, but make sure there is enough space. If you fulfill all these points, you should take a test frame and check it on the display and if you are not happy, you can make further adjustments. And again, this still happens to me, check the focus. When everything is sharp, respectively your desired object is in focus, set the switch to manual. This is important. Nothing is more annoying than an auto-focusing camera in an interval recording. The focus must be on one spot during the whole recording. So if you set everything up, you can start your recording. If you are someone who needs activity during the time of recording, then you should bring it with you. After waiting and reaching the last frames, you can get ready for leaving or look for a new composition, whatever you are motivated for. 
For this video I took these 800 shots here and to make it more exciting I used a slider for a smooth movement. I'm using the LR timelapse tool with Lightroom to create easily a timelapse. There is a free version of LR timelapse 5 which is the latest version and with this one you can create up to 400 images for the beginning is this a good goal. I'm using here the Pro version which can render the time lapses up to 8K resolution and in the ProRes codec. And it is allowed for commercial use and of course there are many other advantages. So the surface is the same and the options you cannot use in the free version are just grayed out. Here we go. The first step is to select our workflow. The visual workflow leaves nothing to be desired. I'm using always this method to create a time lapse because once understand it is very structured and reproducible way to create a time lapse. Next step is to find the folder where are the images stored, what can be done here in the explorer area. So my folder is located on my desktop and I select it. LR time lapse already starts to render a preview of the whole images. In the background LR time lapse creates a folder with preview files and everything. So if you take a look on the folder, the storage grows and grows. The first important decision follows now. How many keyframes do I need for my timelapse and which should it be? LR timelapse is helping us easily with the graphic representation of the brightness gradient of the images. This blue curve shows us the brightness gradient. So the keyframes should be positioned close to the peaks of the curves. Fortunately, my recordings don't have big jumps in brightness, so I decide me for three keyframes. And for all those who wonder what a keyframe is, these frames are our reference images which are edited. So if I choose three keyframes, I will only edit three images. These will then be synchronized with the remaining 797 images. After clicking on save, the metadata will be saved in a small XMP file for every image file so the raw files won't get touched like in Lightroom. Now we start Lightroom and after loading we go back to LR timelapse and take this drag and drop button and drag it to Lightroom. This button will open the import dialog to import the images. Now we click on OK and let this import process take its time. After waiting we can start to edit our keyframes. To do this we go here to filters and select LRT5 keyframes and my three keyframes will be shown. I select the first image, press D for the develop module and as always I click on auto here in the basic panel just to see what the algorithm would to improve. Looks ok for the first click so let's do some adjustments in the highlights and shadows a stronger black is also fine. But I won't edit my timelapse with such a fancy look like my photos because the final editing for the look takes place in the video editing, in my case DaVinci Resolve. So I don't do any color grading in Lightroom, just color correction if necessary and I just try to keep this look as natural as it was. Because if you mix the timelapse with normal camera footage and the timelapse runs already on the limit, you don't have the possibilities adjusted to the other material. So a natural look or almost a lock footage look with a well balanced histogram is a better choice for later adjustments. After activating lens correction and removing chromatic aberrations we go back to the library by pressing G. We see our keyframes and now we synchronize them, but not with the Lightroom synchronization. Instead we use a script which was installed by LR Timelapse. Select all keyframes with Ctrl and A. Now you go to Scripts up here and click on LR Timelapse Sync Keyframes. As you can see the images are being synced with the same settings. You can check the frames, maybe the last one is too dark, so you can turn up the exposure time slightly. What is important now is to save our new metadata settings of the keyframes so LR Timelapse can read it. For this we mark our keyframes again and go to metadata and click on save metadata to file. And we click on continue and you don't need to be nervous because the original files are not being touched. 
After that we go back to LR timelapse and continue there. We click now on the reload button and wait a few seconds for the loading and you can already see something happen Do our settings in Lightroom. The keyframes made some change. Now we click on auto transition and the program calculates a smooth transition between the frames. When this is done we let create now a preview of the time lapse. So let's click on visual preview and wait. This step takes some time and the more photos you took the longer it takes. This is a disadvantage when you work with RAWs. It takes time and you need a powerful computer or at least should have one. You could skip this step but I wouldn't recommend it because if the time lapse is shot under natural light conditions you'll have change in the light and this will be result in a flickering sky for example. And to remove this effect we have thankfully a deflicker function but this will I show after our small break. The visual preview is finished and we can take a look now how the final time lapse will look like. Let's watch it. In my eyes it looks really good, so far. If you noticed for your timelapse any mistake or you want to do new adjustments because you are unsatisfied with the highlights or with a single color for example, you can always go back to Lightroom and can edit the keyframes. When you do this keep in mind to sync the keyframes via the script function and to save the metadata to the files in the menu, after that you do same steps again. Reload, auto transition and a visual preview will be created automatically. So I'm satisfied with my result and want to do the final polish, the deflicker. Due to different exposure times the sky has a flicker ring and this looks unattractive. So the deflicker smooths our pink line here, but be careful if you smooth too much a liveness will get lost. The footage will be look dull. I made the experience that 10 is the best maximum if you have really heavy jumps in brightness. For the sample time lapse, I set the value to 8. The green around our pink line is to visualize this. We have some peaks here, because in this moment a bus was in front of the camera, so the exposure time was adjusted to this, but this is no big deal. When I click apply now, the deflicker will apply it to the preview. So let's do this. The deflicker is done and we check the time lapse again. This looks much more pleasant now than before. So I'm happy with it and will show you now how to render the time lapse. Of course you can refine the deflicker for a finer and precise result. And you have more options, but these are reserved for the paid version only. So we go back to Lightroom, make a right click on one of our keyframes and click on go to folder and library. This is important because for the final rendering afterwards. Now we click again filter and select LRT5 full sequence. All 800 images are shown now. We select all images with Ctrl and the A key and go to metadata and click on read metadata from file. This takes time again and we skip the loading for this. When Lightroom is done we make a right click on one of our frames and go to export and export again. The export dialog opens and we click on the left side on LR timelapse and in my case I decide me for the JPEG and original resolution. And before you click on export you should set the output path for the rendered files. When this is done you can click on export and can sit back and wait. Our images are ready. Now the render dialog of LR timelapse has opened where you decide for the output format and other important features. It is really important to check the aspect ratio of the final video file. The most cameras shoot in 4 to 5 but the video file is in the most time in 16 to 9. So adjust here the final framing. You can add some motion blur for smoother movements of clouds and water for example and the resolution can also be set by depending on your rendered image files. I could go up to 6K with my D750. 
For the frame rate I decide me for 30 frames and the very high quality settings. If you want to do more adjustments afterwards in the video editing software, a 422 or even a 444 subsampling would be recommendable, but of course then you should render the images in 16-bit as TIFF. As you can see LR Timelapse offers a lot of options for the rendering, what I really appreciate. Nevertheless, let's render the file and let us watch it finally. This takes some time again. The final video file is here in the folder now. The effort was worth it in my eyes. The quality is just great, sharpness and colors are excellent and the added motion blur makes it more pleasing. So LR Timelapse allows us to create really professional time lapses with a lot of leeway. Yes, it takes time and you need a powerful machine under your desk, but the results are always superb. We arrived at the end of this guide and I hope you got a nice overview of this whole time-lapse thing made out of raw files. If you want to know more, write it down in the comments and if you liked this video you can leave a thumb up. For more visit lightcolorshadow.com for a beautiful gallery and more. We will see us in one of my next videos, until then good light for you. Until next time, bye bye.